Good morning. Welcome to worship at Hiram First United Methodist. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That may be the best we ever get right there. Good to see each and every one of you here this morning. Just a couple of things before we get started. Uh, when you came in, you should have received a bulletin, and uh, you can follow along our, in our service with us today by the bulletin. And you should have also received a uh, individual serving communion. Did everybody get one of those? Uh, and just real quick, it's, uh, it's like an hourglass. You want to open the bread bottom first. But don't do that right now. And then just hold that piece of bread in your hand, and then, when we're, and then you'll open the juice last, and then you'll be ready to eat the piece of bread and drink the juice. But we just wanted to try that as a way to, to not uh, risk getting anyone sick with a shared cup and a shared loaf. Now, I've already, I've already had one complaint. Someone said this isn't enough juice for them. And I said, well, you know, if you get more juice than that in your piece of bread when you dip it in the cup, then maybe you just got more. See, I wasn't, I wasn't going to say who said anything, Donna. <laughs> but uh, hopefully um, you, you got one of those and you can use that as, as part of our uh, communion time. And we'll do that at the end of the service. Uh, just a couple of other announcements. There's a number in the bulletin. We won't run through all of those. Um, our phone and Internet service is down. So our folks who are at home are not seeing the service today right now. It looks like our lawn company may have accidentally cut the lines, and uh, we'll get that fixed sometime this week. So uh, the service will be recorded, and we'll play it at a later date and make it available um, out on the Internet for folks to, uh, to go and watch the service there. So I apologize to our home audience. I know that you were anticipating service uh, from the comfort of your living room or your kitchen, and I apologize you're not able to join with us for our service live uh, today. Um, just a couple of other things. Um, we are having a food pantry this Friday and Saturday, um, the 25th and the 26th. The actual day of our pantry is Saturday from 10 to 12. And uh, we're now dividing our food pantry into two days. And uh, we have shifts. So rather than having to give up a whole entire Saturday in the heat, uh, you can maybe just come in on Friday for an hour and help with packing. And so... Uh, you can call the church office or you can go online and sign up for uh, the food pantry to serve. But we are offering days of service on both Friday and Saturday. Um, I think the delivery truck gets here around 9 or 10. And so we have some, fo some folks that are helping with unloading the truck. And then we have packing and one-hour shifts in the fellowship hall in the climate-controlled, air-conditioned, or heated fe fellowship hall. So uh, we'll be packing uh, all the groceries uh, during Friday and then on Saturday um, we start gathering around 9 or 9 30 and we actually do a drive-in only uh, distribution on Saturday from 10 to 12 and so I think the, the last few times we've done this most folks are walking out of the parking lot heading home around 12 30 or so um, but our guests come in uh, by appointment uh, they drive through the parking lot on Saturday they stay in their car um, and they have their trunk open so it's a very safe um, exchange there and we're able just to put the groceries in the trunk and then they thank us and they go on so if that is something that you uh, and your family are interested in doing we invite you to come and and to be a part of that and then also one last announcement um, we have some uh, beautiful flower arrangements that have been ordered and we're going to be delivering those at the end of this week uh, to some of our homebound and loving church family members and uh, if you would like to help with that delivery, uh, you can call Sandra in the church office and let her know. Uh, we have nine arrangements to deliver, and we've got some folks that we've picked out to receive those. And so if you want to help with, with delivering flowers, you simply just come by the church and pick up one of the arrangements, and the card will have a name and address on there, and you can deliver it, drop it off on the front porch or, or whatever you would like, ring the doorbell. And, uh, and drop those off uh, to our homebound and shut-in folks. Just a way that we're taking care of our congregation and letting them know that we're thinking about them and loving them uh, during this time and during this season. Um, I'm going to invite Dawn to come up. Uh, Dawn serves as our lay delegate to annual conference. And uh, we had a virtual annual conference on um, Saturday a couple weeks ago. Um, and so it, it is custom for the United Methodist Church that the lay leader would come and, uh, and share on that annual conference and give an update um, as to the business of the conference and what was shared during that time. Don, 
Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to see all y'all again. I've missed you guys. Um, so as Mike said, the conference this year was virtual. So it was condensed from four days down to just one day. So it's pretty much just the business, just one voting after the other. Um, I kind of missed all the connections that we normally do, but we got the business done. So we started by the first vote we had was we um, passed a vote to adopt an eight district structure. We did have a 12 district, now we have eight. And um, of course, after we did that, then that stimulated a series of votes to take care of some administrative matters that had to be changed because we were changing the district's configuration. Our new district is District 1, which is the Central West District. It is composed of Carroll, Cobb, Douglas, Harrelson, and Paulding counties. Uh, financially, we passed a budget of $17 million. This is down 19% from last year, which is about $5 million down. Um, due to the financial strain of the local churches from the COVID crisis, the bishop and all the conference staff have um, declined to raise this year. Um, that also helped kept, keep our budget down. Um, we also closed 23 churches that uh, resulted in a savings of about, or a reduction of expenses of about a million dollars. And um, so those funds from those churches will be deposited in the Charles Barnes Fund for Church Development. Um, due because to the lower budget, that means our apportionments then will be a little bit lower too. Uh, right? <laughs> I hear a cheer. Um, we also passed decisions on the clergy health and benefits packages as well as equitable compensation. Um, I don't know if you're all aware, but not all clergies are paid, or previously not all clergy have been paid um, in a similar manner. So we, they set a minimum uh, salary amount for different clergy, be they full-time, part-time, whatnot. Um, the general conference that was supposed to meet this year has been postponed till August 29th of 2021. And that's the conference of all the bishops and the delegates from worldwide, from all the United Methodist churches worldwide. And that was pretty much it. It was just sitting there voting all day. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'll be available. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather in small and large groups bringing to you our open hearts and minds, praising and thanking you for all you have provided for us in food, shelter, comfort, and especially the love you shower on us. We now take a deep breath, releasing it slowly as we await for your guidance in our lives. Amen.
You will find in your bulletin this morning our affirmation of faith. Uh, Normally this is in our hymnals at page 881. And I invite you to join with me as we share uh, this historic affirmation, uh, not only of this congregation and not only of the United Methodist denomination, but of the church universal. Uh, One that reminds us of who we are and reminds us of our tradition and all the things that went into making us the church that we are now on earth. So join with me as we share this creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. Let us pray again over our offering. Dear Lord Jesus, it is now time to show our appreciation for the things you have provided for us by returning to you a portion of the gifts given to us. May these be used for services for others and our faithful works. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for serving today as our liturgist. Uh, We indeed have so much to be thankful for as a church um, and as brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, We have a number um, in our community of faith and some outside of our community of faith that have continued to ask for prayer. So uh, please take note of our prayer list. It is quite lengthy um, as printed in the bulletin. Sandra works really hard to try to keep that list current and matched up with what you get during the week with our Herald uh, newsletter. Uh, But if you have a change or an addition that needs to be made to that, if you would, let Sandra know in the office so that she can update the prayer list. Um, We did hear from David Beal this morning. Uh, His brother, Ed, who has been on our prayer list for a number of months, passed away this weekend. Um, So if you would, keep uh, David in your prayers. Uh, He's He's experienced quite significant losses here over the last few months, and I know that he treasures and appreciates our prayers. Um, He's got the responsibility for being the executor of his uncle's will, and so he's going to have to take care of that. So just keep David uh, in your prayers. I know he appreciates that. Um, Also thinking about Juanita Twiggs. I know Juanita is is still healing from back surgery, and Gene, you had a little bit of a a slip and spill this weekend, but I see that you're at church today, so uh, good to have you with us, and we're, uh, we're praying for Juanita and keeping her in our prayers. Uh, Gina and Juanita are our newest members. I chose to come and, and seek out Hiram first and join the church during the virus, so welcome officially. We'll, uh, we'll see each other unmasked here eventually, and we'll see. There you go. There you go. Um, Bonnie Holford um, is at uh, the, is in the hospital. She suffered a stroke this weekend, uh, was having a procedure, and um, had a reaction in the procedure. Uh, they were able to administer uh, the medicines that they seek to administer whenever someone's had that stroke. And according to Chuck, when I talked to him, she was doing much, much better. And uh, she was in the right place at the right time with the right people. And uh, so praise be to God, and uh, let's just keep her in our prayers. I don't think... Uh, They're still not allowing visits at the hospitals or nursing homes, so we're not able to get in to see her. But um, according to Chuck, she has her cell phone, and she may answer. So um, you can call and check on her, but you can also talk to Chuck and and check with him 
as well. Or you can answer the phone right there. It's ringing. Um, there's also another name that's on the prayer list. Um, this is someone that I know that y'all may not uh, be familiar with. Um, her name is Jewel Sweat. And um, Jewel is a high school senior. She attends Model High School uh, in the uh, Floyd County area. And uh, she has been diagnosed with stage 4 stomach cancer. And um, just a precious young lady. Uh, she's a, a, a captain of the cheerleading squad, uh, very active in her community. And uh, they were up at a specialty hospital in Maryland uh, for surgery. And um, they were not able to do the surgery that they wanted to do, which I think was a partial to full stomach removal. Um, I can't imagine anybody going through that, but especially a youngster. Um, so she is back home with her family, and um, I know that hospice has been called in to be with her and with her mother. Uh, so just keep uh, the Sweat family in your prayers. Um, I was speaking with her grandmother um, this weekend, and uh, just letting her know that we would be praying for them and just praying for uh, some sort of healing um, and trusting the healing that God has uh, in store for Jewel um, that that she would have comfort uh, in these days and, uh, and peace as she is surrounded by her friends and family. There's a wonderful uh, picture uh, on, the, on her mom's Facebook page. Uh, both the cheerleading squads from both the high schools at the game on Friday gathered around her and uh, were with her at the, at the game with the hospice nurses. So it was good to see a community rallying and coming around uh, one of their young people. But just keep Jewel in your prayers. Um, any other prayer requests or praises that... Um, that maybe we don't have on the prayer list that we need to be thinking of or we need to add to the list, Miss Gussie? Okay. Okay, and that was your daughter's husband passed away? Son-in-law? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, if you could get those names, maybe talk to Sandra on uh, on tomorrow morning and get those names and the family names to her, so we can be sure to get everything in the bulletin. We want to do that. The beautiful arrangement today um, is Macon and Evelyn Weaver's 62nd wedding anniversary. And um, they were going to be here today, and uh, their children surprised them and kidnapped them this weekend and took them away. And so uh, Evelyn said, my flowers are here, but we are not. And so uh, these flowers are in honor of uh, Macon and Evelyn's wedding anniversary, and I know they would appreciate phone calls and cards and notes, uh, giving them some words of appreciation, but a beautiful arrangement, and we're thankful that they chose to share it with us, and um, I think Sandra's going to get those to them as soon as they get back into town, so hopefully it won't be too, too late. Any other prayers or prayer requests? Ms. Congratulations. Little baby boy. All right, good. So there is hope for the family. Good, good. All right. Congratulations to both of you. I know y'all are excited. Um, I know you're excited. Any others? All right, well, let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we, um, we come before you in this season um, of moving out and beyond and, and getting active again and taking great care to to find ways to serve one another and to serve the community. God, we lift up to you the praises this morning. You've heard of uh, healings, uh, successful surgeries, new life that has been brought into our community, as well as celebrations of love, many, many years of love. And God, we, uh, we give you all honor and praise uh, for each and every one of those praises and the many others that... Uh, that are on our lips and in our hearts that, that we've not spoken to yet this morning. God, we just thank you for the beauty of this day. Uh, we thank you for this church. Um, when we take for granted 
at times the ways that we have to gather and to lift our voices in prayer and song, uh, let today be a reminder to each and every one of us of, of this beautiful place and this sanctuary that you offer to us to, to come and to worship you and to bring glory to you. And we just thank you for that, God. Help us to always be mindful of the great many uh, gifts and blessings uh, that you place into our lives. But God, we, always, we also come before you with needs. Uh, we come before you with um, offering the names of those who have passed on and who have ended their journey uh, in this place and uh, lift them up to you this morning and those family members who are experiencing loss, that you would give them comfort and peace. Uh, God, we pray for healing. Uh, we pray for those who um, are seeking a healing touch, but others who may be dealing with end-of-life decisions and um, challenges. We lift each and every one of those up to you this morning, God. You know their names uh, before their, their names even cross our lips. We especially want to think of our homebound and shut-in. Uh, Miss Langston, uh, who's in the nursing home. Uh, Miss Laird. Uh, Michael Chastain, who is at home. Uh, Johnny Curry. Uh, Mr. Bill Bailey and Janet Allen. I also want to be thinking about Frances Rakestraw. She heals from her fall. Lord, we just lift each and every one of these, and there are so many more uh, that we lift to you this morning and ask that they would experience your comfort and your peace uh, in these days and in these hours. Uh, we lift up missionaries who are serving uh, in this community and in the world around us, thinking especially about Nick and Heidi Griffiths who are preparing uh, for... Uh, an extended trip to Sierra Leone and the wonderful ministry that you're going to call them to and that you have called them to uh, in that nation and uh, the appointed individuals and community leaders and villagers that they'll be dealing with and serving and loving. Uh, just give them great traveling mercies. Uh, be with them as they uh, embark on a new adventure of ministry. Uh, we pray for their son, Gilly, who has just entered the Coast Guard uh, so mom and dad are not only going into the mission field, but they're leave, leaving their teenage son um, as he serves our nation in the Coast Guard. So we lift up Gilly right now and just pray that you would uh, give them peace and comfort in this season and that you would protect Gilly and all of his, uh, all of the men and women who serve alongside him in, uh, in the Coast Guard. We think of all of our militarily deployed, God, um, each and every man and woman who put on a uniform, and who stand not only before the flag, but also before the cross uh, to serve our nation, uh, to bring peace and justice, uh, not only in this nation, but in the world around us. God, we ask that uh, you would watch over uh, these men and women in uniform who oftentimes uh, make the ultimate sacrifice so that we have the freedoms that we, that we have uh, in this day and in this time. Lord God, I pray for our nation. Pray for uh, the men and women of law enforcement who oftentimes uh, stand on the line between violence and peace, uh, justice and injustice. Uh, God, we lift up um, all of our communities, especially those that have dealt with um, the various uh, protests and violence, um, especially our communities that have experienced destruction through uh, fire and and that violence, God, and we just ask uh, that you would raise up men and women women who would lead in those communities, who would help them to rebuild and to regain that sense of community and what it means to be um, a viable uh, neighborhood of neighbor and neighbor working together, arm in arm. Uh, we especially think of the men and women who have lost so much out. Um, on the West Coast with the fires and just the natural disasters that have occurred out there, as well as on the coast, um, on our southern coast with the hurricane season. Um, Lord, we just pray for your direction and your discernment as decisions are made related to evacuations and to returns uh, of individuals to homes. Uh, God, we can't imagine what it means to lose everything. For some of us here, we've experienced that. Uh, but we lift up families who have lost um, all of their belongings, all of their worldly goods, who have lost their homes and their cars, who have lost loved ones and family members uh, through these storms and these natural disasters. Uh, God, you are 
the ultimate peace giver. You are the one who can bring comfort. You are the one who in the midst of the storm can pour out joy. You are the one and only who never wavers, who never abandons us, who never leaves us, who always walks before us, with us, and at all times pouring out your grace upon us. God, let us receive your grace on this day. As we gather in this unified time of prayer, as we open our hearts and our minds, you know our needs. We lift those to you now as you hear our voices and hear our hearts. God, let us hear that still, small voice. Let us continue to experience that presence of your Holy Spirit. God, let us be reminded of what it means to be saved. Let us be reminded of the grace that you've poured out in our lives. When we sin, when we fall short, when we say things that we shouldn't say or experience emotions that aren't grace-filled, Lord God, remind us to turn to you. As we move through this service, remind us as we move into a time of Holy Communion that you call us together as a reconciled people as a reconciled church, to follow you. Lord God, we offer all of these prayers and all of these names and even the unspoken prayers of our hearts, each and every one of them to you. May they fall upon your ears. May they enter into your heart. May we experience the movement of your Holy Spirit as we pray the prayer that your Son taught his disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
may be seated. Amen. Have you ever been in a situation where you feel others have received something they don't deserve? Have you ever been in a situation where maybe uh, you have a coworker and the two of you have been doing a job and one of you gets a raise and the other one doesn't? Or maybe you've been in a situation where you feel like you've done everything that you need to be doing and there are others around you who show up a little bit late and they get the choice dessert at the church cover dish lunch. I know none of you have ever experienced that, have you? You, you've never gone through the line at the church cover dish lunch only to get to the dessert table and find out that, 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 uh, that grandma's best pie, all the pieces have been taken. That's never happened to you, has it? You're lying. <laughs> I, uh, I shared with the youth group at one of the churches that I served, I said there is a strategy to church cover dish meals. When you know there's someone in the church that has that wonderful dessert, that everyone waits for it to be unveiled and opened up so that everyone gets a piece, you let everyone else go stand in line and you go ahead and get your dessert first. The dessert table's empty. Now, I've watched a couple of you do that at some of our, our covered dish meals, and so our strategy is out there. So it's, it's going to be a draw, it's going to go either way now. So some will make a rush for the dessert table, and others will make a, a rush for the, for the lunch table. But I think we've all been in that situation in some area of our life where we have felt that some around us have received or gained something that in our imagination or in our understanding that maybe they don't deserve or maybe they didn't work hard enough for or they certainly didn't put in the time or the energy that we put in uh, to, to receive. Today's text touches on that. And Jesus teaches in today's text from Matthew, not about salvation, but about God's grace and how God's grace, even in those situations when it seems like things aren't fair, that God's grace is enough for us. God's grace is sufficient. I can remember serving uh, one of my first churches. I had a youth group there. A uh, great bunch of kids. They were all community kids. Um, really, only two or three of the children were from families in the church. We had about eight to ten uh, kids that were in the youth group. And it was kind of a unique group in that uh, over the course of several years, we would be boy heavy, and then all those boys would graduate, and then over the next few years, we'd be girl heavy. And during the time that I was there, we had mostly girls that were in the youth group and just a handful of boys. Um, and I can remember... One Wednesday evening, we were gathered in the youth room, and we were reading some scripture, and we were talking, and this question was posed. One of the young people in the group, who also happened to be the daughter of the associate pastor, said to me, asked the question, Pastor Mike, if someone is on death row for murder, and they accept Jesus Christ before they receive the death penalty, will they go to heaven? Now, I see some of you nodding your heads, and I'll tell you that your pastor and the way that I read Scripture and the way that I interpret Scripture, my answer was yes. As difficult as it may be to understand God's grace, even in that moment when someone has violently taken the lives of others and pays a price for that in losing their own life, yes, God knows their heart, and God hears them just as God hears. Here's those of us who are in the church every day that the doors are opened. Whenever the bells are rung or whenever the music is sung, God hears us just as he hears those who fall short. We don't have to go very far in Scripture to see that actually lived out. When Jesus hung on the cross, he hung between two criminals, both given an opportunity right there, depending on what they believe, to ask Jesus into the heart and to accept God's salvation for them. And we know how that story played out. Just one. Just one opportunity to be able to experience God's grace and to share God's grace with others. Jesus tells the parable of workers who get paid equally. And in this case, 
They're paid equally, but they don't put in what appears to be the equal amount of labor. So I don't want you to get lost in how long folks worked or didn't work or how much they got paid or they didn't get paid. What I want you to think about today is God's grace that regardless of how much you put in, regardless of how long you've been there, God's grace is sufficient. Hear these words from Matthew chapter 20, the first 16 verses. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day, and he sent them into his vineyard. About the third hour he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones, the ones who worked the least amount, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the eleventh hour came, and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. This is when they got to the dessert table and... Grandma's favorite pie was all gone. They began to grumble. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, you have heard the music. You have seen our hearts, you have heard our prayers, you have experienced the fullness of our worship, and we stand before you now, and we sit before you now and this morning, and we hear your word, and it can be difficult to understand exactly what is sought to be explained in today's word. May it speak into our hearts and remind us, Remind us, God, maybe of some times when we haven't been gracious. Remind us of times when, when we haven't fully experienced and received your grace, not because of something that you've done, but because of something that we've thought or done ourselves. God, move us. Move us to a place where we look beyond those who are around us and what they have and what they receive. Move us to a place where we focus on our relationship directly with you. And we see you as the generous God who loves us. And let us receive exactly what you have for us. For some it may be healing. For others it may be joy. For some it may be an answered prayer. Others, it may be finances. Hear us, receive us, and pour out your grace upon each of us. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer, hide me, your humble servant, behind the shadow of the cross. For it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. 
Entrance to God's kingdom is not by membership or work. It has been and it always will be based on God's grace. His generous grace that He pours out for each and every one of us. We can, if we're honest with one another, and if we're honest with God, can find ourselves in a competition at times, trying to, to one-up and to earn more and to get more. And we are reminded over and over again in Scripture that there is nothing that we can do to earn that which God has prepared for us. Because He is a generous giver. And He sees each and every one of us right where we are, with all that we have and with all that we think we don't have, and He blesses us. Indeed, He sees the dessert table. He knows that some have raided the brownies and the apple pie, yet He chooses to provide more and more abundantly. Some, as they seek to enter God's kingdom find themselves competing for some type of superior or exceptional place before God. That perhaps they rely on their upbringing or their social position. Others feel deserving because they've spent time with Christ. They've been in church day in and day out. They've earned their place at the table. But Scripture continually points out to us that those who gain a place in the kingdom do so and can do so simply as new believers with the reassurance of God's grace. You see, we don't have to wait in line for the dessert. It's poured out as soon as we enter the place, as soon as we enter the room, as soon as we enter God's space. Where do you think we would find ourselves today debating what we think we've earned or where we have spent our time or where, or where we're here because of God's incredible grace, realizing that we have believed and there is no amount of work that can get us in. Where would we believe? Where would we find ourselves if we felt that we had to work to get in? I, I'm, I'm thankful that that is not the case because I can be a lazy person at times. I can choose to sit on my sofa a little bit longer than to get out in the yard and do some yard work. I am thankful for God's grace. How about you? Many years ago, a group of friends and I took a mission trip to Guatemala. And we traveled to the Central American country. Uh, we were going to go down and build a church. We were also going to be offering free dental clinics uh, while we built the church. And so we had several different teams that were working. Teams were working outside the church, getting the, the supplies to the building site. Others of us were working inside the church uh, where it was a little bit cooler and we were out of the direct sunlight. And still others were working in uh, an area behind the church that was a, um, a makeshift dental lab. And we had uh, two dentists and nurses and their assistants who were working in that area. And there was a fan that was blowing in that room keeping the patients cool. Could you imagine the grumblings that we had on the work site that day for those who were outside under the, the broiling Guatemalan sun, getting sunburned and mosquito bitten? Can you imagine the grumblings for those who were inside where it was a little bit cooler and every once in a while there would be a nice breeze that would flow across that space while we worked on the inside? Can you imagine the grumblings towards the group they got to sit in the air-conditioned dental suite each and every day while the fan blew across the group and kept them comfortable. I offer you this, is that God saw each and every one of us according to the grace that He poured out upon us doing the work that He called us to. But there was something else unique that happened on that trip we weren't just doing the work by ourselves, but we were working side by side with those in the village. And so you would have entire families who would come up for the day and who would work in one of those areas, probably the outside or the inside, because the dental clinic were just for actual patients going in to have teeth extracted 
or to have things checked out. And, and so you would have families and individuals who would give up a day, two days, three days, an entire week of working in the fields, and they would be at the church on that day helping us to build this church for their village and for their community. And uh, it wasn't without reward. Of course, they were getting rewarded and that they were going to have a beautiful church to worship in and to experience uh, their faith in and to share Christ with others. But also, the pastor of the church had arranged, unbeknownst to all these families, for a local produce company to come up from the town many, many hours away with a truck filled with fresh fruits and vegetables. And at the end of the week... He had all of the families who had been working with us, who had been living, who live in that community, and who had been ministering to one another. He had them all gather around, and he handed out bags of fresh fruits and vegetables as a pay of sort, as a reward of sort, to to thank them and to encourage them. And I can imagine the rumblings, and I actually I saw some of the looks, some of the sideways looks by by some of the older gentlemen who had been there from day one out in the heat, bringing bags of sand from the riverbed up for us to make concrete, hauling the cinder blocks on their heads up from where the truck had dropped off the cinder blocks because it couldn't make it up the mountain road uh, to where the church was being built. I could see the sideways glances as they are receiving their bag of fruit and vegetable, and they're looking at the family that just showed up yesterday for whatever reasons, and they got a bag of fruits and vegetables as well. Folks, that's a grace-filled moment. That's a grace-filled moment. That's a teaching moment right there. And I can remember, regardless of how long the families had worked and how much time they had sacrificed, when it came down to the worship service on that last day, everybody was in the church worshiping Christ Jesus. Everybody was singing and lifting their voices. Everyone was experiencing the grace of God on that day. That will be one of the very first times that um, I was ever called upon to preach in the foreign mission field. Um, I do not speak um, Spanish in such a way that I could do an entire sermon in Spanish. And so I just spoke in English and we had an interpreter that stood up and I would pause at different times in my message and then he would translate into Spanish for the people and we got towards the end of the service, and a hush fell over the crowd. And we were in a space that was probably about four times larger than this sanctuary. No chairs, no pews, hard concrete floor. The very back was still a dirt floor because we had not poured the concrete there. And those folks stood and, and worshipped in that space. And at the very end of that service a peace and a quiet fell across the room. And the entire mission team and our dental folks were all up on, on the platform with me. And I turned around, I looked at them, and I said, we're going to do an altar call. God is calling us to invite this community down to the altar. And folks, you know that in that moment, the Holy Spirit fell in that space. And hundreds of folks came down to the altar to pray and to be prayed over. God's grace is sufficient. You know, we put all these human, worldly expectations and feelings and thinking around what it means to be God's children and what it means to be God's church and who deserves and who doesn't deserve. That's part of the, of the struggle that we face in our culture right now or those who feel like they deserve and those who feel like they've been left out and others who feel like they, they've received what they wanted but not in the ways that they've wanted it. And God says, my grace is sufficient. I have everything that you need right here. All you simply need to do is to ask. Is to ask. There is nothing that we can do to receive what God has prepared for us. The work has already been done, and it is simply by His good grace, His sufficient grace, 
that we find ourselves in that place where we can simply receive what He's ready to pour out on us. It doesn't matter when we arrive or what work we'll do. Each will be received and evaluated on his or her own accord, simply between him and her and God, a generous God. We simply need to focus on the task at hand, that which we've been called to, and trust the work that he's asked us to do, whether it's one hour, two hours, or many hours. Each of us will be given an opportunity to see to hear and to receive for ourselves, to be reminded that God's grace is sufficient for each and every one of us, right where we are, just as we are. Some of us are 11th hour workers, if we're really honest. Some of us are... 9 o'clock workers. Some of us are 6th hour workers. Some of us are 3 hour workers. And some of us have been there since the very beginning. God's grace is sufficient. And He wishes to pour it out on each and every one of us. It can be tempting to look at one another's position and somehow consider what we receive is more or less than what our neighbor has. But yet we're reminded of this simple fact. His grace is sufficient. Regardless of who we are, where we've come from, how long we've been here, how much or how little we have put into it, God considers each of us the condition of our hearts and who we are to Him. Our work, our journey, our sacrifice, our gain is simply by God's grace. And there's nothing we can do to earn any more. And there's nothing that we can do to earn any less. It is His grace that He gives us. His generous portion of grace poured out on each and every one of us, regardless of our place in life, regardless of the task at hand, regardless of what we've sacrificed, regardless of what we've earned. None of us deserves what God offers but yet He pours it out without question over and over and over and over again. I consider Christ sitting at the Last Supper with the disciples. I consider those who were healed along His journey leading to that time and place. I think of the incredible miracles that were witnessed and the radical changes that occurred in the lives of so many who gathered and heard his stories and his parables and his sermons, who simply sat and watched as his actions spoke louder than his words. God's grace is wonderful. God's grace is sufficient. I reflect on his last days of the Passover and his last moments on the cross, a criminal at each side. I think of the homeless standing outside of Walmart. I think of the single mother waitress working behind the restaurant counter. I gaze upon the wealthy business owner as he pulls away from his store and I look in the mirror and see the eyes of someone looking back at me. God's grace is wonderful. God's grace is sufficient. We are surrounded by many who we have worked alongside and others who were here long before we arrived and who will be here long after we leave. God's grace is wonderful. God's grace is sufficient. There's nothing we can do to earn it. Nothing more and nothing less. Today, this one loaf reminds us of Christ's body broken for us. This one cup reminds us through God's grace of Christ's blood shed for each and every one of us. And at the end of our lives, when our days here are gone, each of us will have an opportunity to stand before God and to be held accountable and to receive our pay for the work that we've done. Thanks be to God that His grace is sufficient. Amen.
Amen. You've each received a small communion element that I want to invite you to, uh, to hold and to be reminded that His body is broken for each and every one of us. And so I invite you to take your cup and turn it over with the bread on the top and open that seal and take out that piece of bread. And likewise, he shed his blood for each and every one of us so that we have forgiveness for our sins, so that we can experience God's grace and forgiveness for ourselves. And so I invite you now, carefully, to turn your cup back over to where the juice is right side up and remove the seal. Carefully. And to take the bread and feast upon it and receive Christ Jesus' body. And to receive the juice as a reminder of His blood shed for each and every one of us. bow your heads and pray with me. Lord God, we are reminded today of your grace. We are reminded of the sufficient nature of your being in our lives. And we are reminded that as we, see, as we receive this gift of bread and juice, that where we were once broken and where we may have experienced sin in our lives or in the lives of those around us, that today in receiving this gift, we are whole again. That today in receiving this gift, we are forgiven. And that today in receiving this gift, we are reminded that we are to be grace givers, that we are to leave from this place and share this gift of grace with our families, with our co-workers, with our difficult neighbors who keep mowing on our side of the yard, with the person who cuts us off in traffic, with that personality that just grates us the wrong way every time we walk into the room, we are to be grace givers and receive your grace into our lives and pour out your grace on others and be reminded that sometimes we are those difficult personalities. God, you have blessed us as a church. You have given us this place to gather to receive your gift of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Pour out your grace upon us. Let us be filled and let us be whole again. For it's in your Son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen.
we'll give you thanks. Thank you. Praise God. I invite you now to stand and to receive our benediction. Um, our ushers will help us exit in a, in a fashion that doesn't uh, have us running into each other and bouncing off of one another. We'll start with the back rows first. But I invite you to, uh, to gather up your bulletin and your communion cup. And um, if you choose not to take your bulletin home, you'll notice we have some um, garbage cans at the doors. You can throw those away. I want to invite you to do something also. If you've got a family member, Juanita, uh, or someone at home that, that you've left, Paul and Ruth, uh, Jacob, um, Eli and Asher will be at the doors with the baskets, and I invite you to take an extra communion serving home. And just in a time of being together as a family, pray with one another and, uh, and offer uh, those words of grace and forgiveness uh, with your family members and with your loved ones who are there uh, close to you. Go now as God's church. Go now as a grace-filled people called to experience and claim that grace for yourselves and called to pour it out and share it with others. Go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.